to introduce yourself to Abhi uh, so that uh, based on your introduction, then uh, Abhi uh -huh. will give his introduction and we can proceed. Uh, so uh, we'll start with Selvam. Uh, can you just uh, yeah, just a kind yourself? of an, I, uh, just kind of two liner like what is I mean your background whether you are already working in SAP like which areas that's it nothing more than. Uh, hi, Selvam, uh, is it possible for you to give the introduction? Yeah, sorry, uh, I was talking on mute. Um, yes, I have no about, problem. Yeah. yeah, I was I have about 15 years experience in SAP uh, in FI and Treasury. Just want to understand what's the cash manage from the cash management. Yeah. OK, OK, super. Thank you, Selvam. Thank uh, you. Hi, Abhi. I'm Dirpati. Just I have 14 years of experience in SAP. Currently working in uh, Treasury, but uh, new to cash management. Uh, just I want to know more on cash management and the BCM part. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Dirpati. Thank you. Uh, Srinivas, is it possible for you to give the introduction? Yeah. Hi. Uh, you just need to unmute. Yeah. Is, thank you. Uh, Srinivas, I am from Hyderabad and uh, I have been working as a FICO consultant. For the last eight years. Oh, great! Super. Thank you, Srinivas. Uh, Saira, is it possible for you to give the introduction? Hey, this is Saira. Uh, I actually have almost like twelve years of experience working in finance and uh, revenue accounting, and I'm just looking for upskill myself. Thank you, uh, Saira. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Jamshed, Omar. Hi, this is Jamshid. I've been working in SAP for around 16 years now. I um, just want to understand what's new in cash management and about the new cash management. Okay, okay. Thank you, Jamshid. Oh, uh, you know Anusha already, right, Abhi? So let's go for uh, Al. Okay, okay. Can you introduce yourself? Yeah. Yeah, I'm also yeah FICO consultant for 16 years. Okay, okay, great. Okay. Mm -hmm. So thank you, all of you. Uh, let me share my screen. And before that, uh, let me uh, give my introduction to you all. So my name is Avinash. So I'm having an almost, uh, you know, 18 years of experience. Um, I I, uh, uh, I came from, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, I mean, domain from the domain, I work for six, seven years, various banking, financial sectors, and then I moved to IT uh, and I started my career as you know, right, F, as a FICO and then moved to uh, SAP Treasury Banking. So, so from um, last seven, eight years, I'm into the, uh, you know, Treasury Banking operations uh, are kind of implementations. So um, it's like, you know, we have implemented a new BAM functionalities with the DMEs, uh, bank communication managements, and cash management so uh, this is all the areas like you know we have seen that uh, i mean most of the times when i go for the training i've seen that uh, everywhere the people are talking about the basic uh, you know cash management and all so we basically the reason we have okay let me sh uh, share my screen sana can you please uh, give me presenter right to share my screen so we have identified like you know this is the area like you know a lot of people are would be interested to know like you know now the banking treasury suppose if you're going for any uh, you know interview for the treasury now these are the very common areas they are expecting uh, okay so whether you have an experience the sap uh, what is that called sap banking uh, cash management so these are the various i mean it's a very common phenomenon nowadays so that's the reason when I was giving a training for the treasury, I find a lot of people uh, who don't know how these kind of things are there, like, you know, how to configure the DME, how to configure the electronic bank statement, because these are the normal things. It will part of your, uh, you know, uh, banking and treasury. And also, like, you know, the cash management configuration. So apart from the cash management, the important tool is the cash pooling. Uh, cash pooling for internal funding, cash pooling for cash concentrations. So, and 
how to count the memo records, bank communication management. And these are the very vital thing nowadays. So that's the reason I thought of let me introduce a kind of course where I can give you kind of understanding how to configure the DME end to end uh, to understand. So when I'm talking about the DME, I'm talking about the complete configuration right from the scratches how to create the DME format, assign, how to assign, how to do the assignment to the FPZP, OBPM1, OBPM4 configuration, how you're going to use the structure table condition in the DME aggregations. Uh, what is the new functionality of DMEX? Okay, so all these things I, I thought of, so that's a reason I've introduced the course like uh, S4HANA banking and cash management. And you can see that when you're talking about the DME configuration, we talk everything on the DME. Similarly, we also, uh, you know, show you how to configure the electronic bank statement, uh, how to do the end-to-end -end configuration of EVS, how to going to create your own file, EVS statement, EVS file for the different, different scenarios. And also we thought of, uh, you know, showing you like the cash management configuration and the testing, how the cash management nowadays, I mean, the S4 HANA cash management, what is the use of the exposure table? one exposure table what is cash pooling so cash pooling functionality is very common phenomena in that uh, it's also it's also part of the uh, cash management cash managers let's say uh, i tell you a lot of automations we have done here it's not like a standard functionality because uh, when you go to that uh, you know internal funding so what happened normally uh, i have seen from the various uh, you know implementation perspective so there would be a cash manager who would be uh, you know, creating a request like they need a fund and they will be creating some kind of request. Now, those kind of things actually is missing in the SAP. So what SAP has happened, I mean, what is SAP is doing? They have got a this, uh, you know, cash pooling functionality via which they will be. I mean, it would be done like, you know, whether you do the internal funding or we do the cash concentrations. So all these things, uh, you know, you can do it how you basically do it in the no business scenarios, how they are doing it. So all we're going to discuss about that one. And, um, you know, cash concentration, what is the use of cash concentration? So example, I'll give you one example. Uh, you might have seen that uh, in the treasury, like there would be money market product called investments, right? So before they do the investment, normally what happened, the, every corporate do the cash pooling or we call it as an, I mean, cash pooling, as a part of cash sweeps or the cash concentration. So what they will do, they will try to see whatever the minimum balances are there. So for every account, let's say you you uh, you are implementing SAP with a very big corporates where they have got a 50, 60 company codes. So what they do, they will maintain a kind of a minimum balances to every account. And more than that, if any excess cash would be there, they will pull it as a part of cash concentration. Okay. And after that only, from that account, they will do the investment either in fixed deposit or, you know, either mutual funds or a, or a securities anywhere. So the point here is the process, when you're talking about the cash concentrations or cash pooling, you should know what are this functionality works? So why do the cash concentration? The cash concentration happening like any excess case cash lying to the account is always, an, is always a risk. Risk in the sense, um, you have a, because any, because this cash, if you can do the investment and you can earn some interest. So this way, because ideal cash, will not give you any interest or any benefit out of that. And that's a reason. And another reason why the cash concentration, why the in each individual company code cannot go and do the investment to the bank. The reason being as an individual company code, if you go and do the investment, you may not get the better rate rather than if they pull the cash uh, from the all the organization and invest it on a single company and a single bank and it would be huge money and they can have a better negotiation with the bank. So that's the reason normally corporates will do the cash pulling from, uh, you know, after keeping the minimum account 
into the their current account whatever the more than that minimum account they will pull it and invest it in the in the form of any investment and that will go via the treasury and and when you're talking and also we have included like there are a few functionalities you might have seen that in the cash management that the various memo records how to create posting the memo records because memo records also plays a very important role example here let's say there are certain expenses you cannot uh, you know which you cannot be posted directly via the cash flow because what happened when you do the uh, you know uh, any posting so any posting to the cash management it would be always done via some kind of uh, real posting let's say you uh, you know done some investment via the bank so in the bank account we normally give the planning level or customer master vendor master you define the planning level with the planning group but there are certain expenses which cannot be posted because these are let's say kind of a future postings or kind of in tax postings would be happening only that day but what happened the, as a cash manager they wanted to see what kind of uh, you know uh, i mean for let's say for a particular week i wanted to see all the future for i mean uh, uh, kind of a prediction they wanted to see for the particular week what are my obligation to make the payment and due to that reason uh, system provided a kind of an uh, you know option to put a memo records this memo record let's say you wanted to make a payment after one week uh, you know let's say some tax payment or let's say any sort of liabilities that you can post it via the memo records okay and when you post those memo records it will get reflected to the your your cash management uh, in, in the cash flow analyzer you can go and see so this is all for uh, the predictions like you know for the particular week like you know when you're talking about the cash management we are all talking about the uh, some sort of a kind of an one week prediction so one week prediction for the cash manager to know that what would be my liability for this particular week where i have to make the payment so accordingly the cash manager and go if they find there is no enough cash so they may be uh, you know go for any kind of uh, cash pooling from the other uh, corporates to meet up those uh, liability payment and then i thought of uh, you know uh, you know taking that in this course i had to include the bank communication management what is the bank communication management process all about uh, like how to configure the bank communication manage how to do the march payment uh, approve process how you going to set up the approval process execution of the fbpm1 because what happened uh, when you execute the f110 or let's say treasury payment f triple one the moment you do the final payment and select the uh, create uh, payment medium so ideally what happened after f110 execution you see that dme file generates and we send the dme via the middleware to the bank server but what happened when you activate the bank communication management even though you select the create bank uh, payment media at the time of final run system will not generate the dme so what happened after the f110 or f triple one execution there is one more transaction called fbpm1 that has to be executed and after that only the file the batch file get created and then it will go for i mean the file would be will send that uh, details to the approver to approve it and after that the approver if they say there will be two kind of scenario one scenario would be let's say i don't have an approver i want auto approval process if the amount is uh, like a beer minimum uh, let's say 1000 up to uh, 10,000, let's say there is no approval required. So in that case, it will auto approve. So what will happen? The DME will generate and then middleware team it will pick the file and post it. I mean, it will play the, I mean, it will place the file to the bank server. And what happened when there are two approvers or three approver or four approver in that case, what happened? 
someone has to go and approve the payment file only then after all the approver approves that the dme will generate and accordingly middleware pick up the file and place it to the bank server and the payment will be happening so we just wanted to show you how that's end to end this bank communication configurations you have to do how to do your uh, approval mechanism all this stuff so this is all about this uh, my course curriculum for bank and s4 hana cash management so any questions any doubt you all will will all welcome so if you have any question like what are the things i am going to take care what are the things you are you are open to you know ask any question Hi Abhinesh, uh, Selvam here. Um, yeah, so hi. I, I noticed that. So part of this cash management, in-house cash is not involved. No, no. In-house cash is a different altogether. It required the. I mean, first of all, you wouldn't get that server kind of thing, and it required a lot of uh, efforts, like you know, all the uh, bodies, uh, all the you know. Uh, uh, all other configuration like you know right from the uh, so not available in short this doesn't include the in-house cash okay okay thank you yeah you're welcome so any other expectation from the course like is it it is for the people who don't have an experience on the electronic bank statement dme uh the lockbox and then uh bank communication management and yes and overall that the course is designed for the cash management with the bank so this is what we all going to discuss about this uh, in this curriculum so we're going to not only discuss the you know how to create how to configure but how you're going to create end-to-end -end, uh, configuration testing everything based on this so any other question anybody wants to know anything more than that or you know if they wanted to ask something how are i going to do that or anything is fine any questions are welcome <laughs> yeah one more one more question um yeah on please. that word document uh, i'm not sure what point there's a thing called uh, you mentioned uh, exposure and can you scroll down a little bit ha the exposure means the one yeah. exposure table you have to activate in the cash management. So uh -huh. the one exposure table, when you activate at the cash management for, if you, let's say in the SCC, ECC, you are having an ECC system. Now you wanted to move to the S4 HANA. So what happened, one exposure table, you have to activate. And not only that, even in S4 HANA also, if you want, uh, the cash management to be work. So first thing, this will not be auto activated. You have to go and activate at the each company code level. Only then the functionality works. Because what happened, we experience uh, from our implementations. So uh, we have what happened, I tell you the story. So the project which I, I mean, uh, we currently I'm working. So in that project, what happened? They are not using the S4 HANA, they are not using at all the standard cash for uh, cash management. So they have designed some kind of um, custom cash management. So it has a lot of automations and everything. But then what happened? We find uh, because even though they are not using the report of the cash management, ultimately the planning level planning time has to be maintained, right? And they are maintaining it because data would be fetched from there only. So the partially they configure the system, the cash management, but they are not activated all these things. Then when they execute the F110, it was giving an error saying that you have to activate the one exposure. The reason being when they are executing F110, that point of time, whatever the GLs get being heated in that GL, planning levels being defined. And since they have not activated the one exposure table, system find inconsistency. Or sometimes what happens when they migrate the data, 
define some of the places, the cash management, some values related to the cash management, it's it's appearing. And because of that, so that's the reason what SAP is saying, if you are, whether you're moving S4 HANA cash management or not, but at least if you have this kind of inconsistency, you are using some of the functionality of the cash management, you have to activate the one exposure table at the company code level. So that's the reason when you are doing the configuration is not, I mean, uh, along with the configuration of the cash management, you have to do one exposure table activations. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Otherwise, what happened? Like if you not activated at the time of F110, it will give an F111 or F110. It will give an above dump saying that a one exposure has to be activated at the, I mean, BKPF level. This is a standard error message you will be getting. So that is the reason one exposure table action is must and that would be happening at the company code level. And now all the data at the cash management, uh, hedge management, everything will go and store in the one exposure table. Okay. Any other question? So when is the training starting? And the... Uh, Sana, can you please highlight here? <laughs> so you get this information. Oh, we... Yes, yes, guys. Uh, one second. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we are um, starting the training from the next weekend, and it will be mostly weekend classes, Saturday and Sunday. And the timings would be 7 p.m. Uh, IST or 8 p.m. IST. The timings, I just let you know. Um, and uh, coming to the related um, content and duration of the course and the fee structure, I'll be sharing everything to your emails. Okay, so admin related queries, I am the concerned person, uh, you can reach me out. Uh, so subject related queries, we can just discuss right now with Abhi. Thank you. Yes. So, uh... yeah, Abhi. So that I think I, I don't know no questions they have like if because all the questions are already answered. But however, if you have anybody has got any question, please feel free to ask. Me. Anusha, you want to ask something? Yeah, yeah, Sana. Abhi, for EBS, what is the format you are going to discuss? See, the two things. In the EBS, it would be MT940 and the BI2. Both. Yes. Both. Okay. okay. Any other question? If not, then we can wind up the session. <laughs> so, okay, <laughs> not about the content, but uh, okay. so, so uh, uh, how we are communicating actually, I just uh, register via LinkedIn. So, we, what is the course uh, cost uh, and how we are yep. yes Alp. Uh, Alp, i'm just sharing my email id and uh -huh. uh, my contact number over the chat here okay uh, so you can just get in touch with me on this number okay yeah you can discuss and i'll be sharing the details okay yeah it would be great thanks okay yeah and um uh, the chat I think Panus from Selvam, you want to ask something? No, uh, actually, thank you, Ali. Uh, are you going to send us the email, right? Is that what you said? Right, 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 okay. right. I'll be sending the email. I have your email IDs. When you registered, I got your email IDs. So I'll just send you the emails and uh, we can communicate, communicate over there. Or um, I have just pinged my email ID and the contact number uh, in the chat window, you can see. Okay, you can just save it that and you guys can ping me on WhatsApp. I can provide you all the details related to the same. 
thank you sir okay thank you so much so uh, abhi uh, so you're done with your side yes uh, unless anybody has got any specific questions and uh, i'm done okay abhi, great uh, so guys uh, if it's okay we can just wind up the session here and uh, we can just yeah. connect and then i'll yeah, show just, you the details yeah one more question how long will it take the sir, curriculum to finish this how many weeks um ideally this is 35 to 40 hours so depends on like you know how the course been i mean how many or what is the whether it's a weekend session or if it is everyday session so depending on that uh, you can think of so approximately days. alp it takes uh, eight weekends if you're going with the only weekend classes okay yeah thank you Okay. Thank you so much. So let's connect yeah. again. Thank you, Abhi. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.